How's it going YouTube? Jamie the Kids 0 here, coming at you guys with a um, regionals report. Um, I went to the Kempston WCQ uh, yesterday and I piloted my wind-up deck, just the standard wind-up build that you saw me use for um, Bristol WCQ um, with, uh, with some ever so slight changes but nothing different from Tournament Diaries you'd already seen. Um, I did not top this one sadly so that's an end to my topping streak of WCQs sadly. Um, I ended up going 4-2 drop, um, I won my first three games, uh, lost the second one due to misplays, and then, of course, I, I, I'll explain that later, and then the next round I played, uh, in round five, I lost because I got absolutely sacked, which I will explain again, and then round six, I managed to beat my opponent, and then I went and saw the TO, who had been asking me if I could do feature matches, and I said, is there any point in me playing the seventh round, am I going to top eight, and he said, no. We worked it out in the standings, I wasn't going to top 8, so I just went and did feature matches for him, and I have about 4 feature matches for you guys that I'm going to post in the near future, so you can look out for those. Um, so of course I played wind-ups, I'm going to go through the list really quickly, um, it was really standard, I will talk about things that were good, but if it wasn't notable, it won't get talked about I don't think. So to start things off, I played Triple Rabbit, um, again, it's just insane factory plays, Triple Shark, I opened two of these a lot, um, which was good in some places because you could just go Tyrus aggressive first turn and really push your opponent, especially if you had other cards in hand like Thunder King so you could really push hard. I won some games in like three turns from going Tyrus aggro, my opponent couldn't really get past it. Uh, Double Magician, I've considered playing three now, because um, there were times when I needed a third, um, especially drawing two, but two Magician is still consistent. Um, triple rat. This came to me a lot. Um, a lot of bad. I was in a lot of bad positions, and drawing the rat really did win me a lot of games. So, rat was helpful. Uh, double tour guide and the sangan again. I drew. I top deck tour guide quite a lot. Um, double reaper. These were good, but I probably prefer them as snow eaters at this event. So that might be a possible change in the future. Double thunder king. These didn't perform too well. They were okay, but they uh, they only really stunned. A little bit Mermails and the one Gear Gear player I played. They were like terrible in some of my other matchups. That was my monsters, of course. Uh, for the spells, the Reborn, the Dark Hole, the Storm, the book. I hardly saw book actually, I saw it like once. Uh, the Avarice, which I really wish I'd drawn more. I drew it like opening hands when it was dead or I didn't draw it at all. Uh, double MST, I wish I played the third because there was some back row that was a bitch. And then triple factory, which I never saw until round three. I didn't see factory at all until round three. And when it, when it was against heroes, so that really shat on that matchup because heroes lose to factory. Uh, for the traps, um, compulse, uh, triple chain. These were so good. Um, however, the one problem was I played against an Insecta player, and I had three chains in my main, in my main, and I had two Veilers in my side. And in games two and three, I didn't see any chains or any Veilers, and he wrecked my face. So, they were dead. So they were dead in deck, because I never drew them. So, sad times. Double Mirror Force. Mirror Force was so good, this event. Like, I drew it so many times when I was in a bad position. And the ability to just set it when my opponent had a massive field. And they would never read it. I just set the Mirror Force, and they'd probably think it was a, a deep prison or something like that. With their massive field swing, and I'd kill everything. The one time I actually ran into a Mirror Force was when I had to make a play against Mermails. He had one back row and one face down monster and I had the wind up OTK in hand. And I was able to, I could have gamed him with an Abyss Dweller and a play like that over the face down monster if his back row wasn't Mirror Force. His back row was Mirror Force. I, t I took a calculation, because even if his back row was Sphere I could have had game. But I made a calculation and I guess I was wrong. But Mirror Force, for me it saved me all the time but it lost me a game it was in my opponent's hands. Um, double bottomless, these were amazing. I drew these so much. Uh, double torrential, again, I drew these loads. I drew like two at a time. So the ability to just set one and know that later on I would have another one to as a contingency plan if my opponent was going off. Um, double warning and judgment, which rounds it all off. I think judgment was really useful today, actually. It protected me for a lot of plays, and I really liked it. Saved me a lot. Um, that is the main deck for the extra. It's really standard. It is just the Zen mains, which put in a bit of work, but it didn't do much this event. Zen Mighty, this always got bottomless. The Zen Mighty got hit a lot 
by bottomless, so mid mid avarice plays dead. So I mean, it was alright, but I never saw it too much. I didn't see it too much. Uh, Leviathan Dragon, this put in a lot of work. Uh, Leviathan, I made it once when I, when I had a shark removed from play, so I used it as a Zen Mighty because I needed a shark, so I just got the shark from re removed from play instead of deck. So it saved my Zen Mighty for later. Um, Giga Brilliant, again, OTK plays, good card. Tim Tempo, this helped me drain a, an opponent's Acid Golem. I was playing against a Machina guy around 6, he was playing the Cyber, Cyber Eltonin Monster Mash deck, and he had uh, Acid Golem on board, and I just went 10 tempo, drained the Acid Golem, he couldn't, go, he couldn't do anything. So, I dra it, it drained him down to like, a K, and then he had to tribute it off for a Fortress, and I was able to get around the Fortress. Because he had to crash the Fortress into this, kill this, left himself with a blank field on a K, so... Uh, Pablo Imperative, this was great, um, it flipped up a lot of Snow Man Eaters, but... What are you going to do? Mace Stroke. I made him once, I think. Or I never made him, I'm not sure. Abyss Dweller. I made this against the Mermail player, but he always had an out to it, which was really annoying. So, it should have been good, but it wasn't. Utopia. I made it loads. Zen Meister. Um, I actually couldn't find my Utopia in my extra deck, and I needed to 2-5 beta to go for game. So I went into Zen Meister. I spent ages looking for Utopia. I knew it wasn't great, but I couldn't find it in my extra, so I just went Zen Meister and game. So, that's, I think that's the only time I used this, when I couldn't find Utopia. Shockmaster, I put it out three times during the event, I think. So good. So good. Uh, Tyrus, I made this loads. Tyrus is so good. Um, other than that, there's no real other comments I have about it, but it was such a good card. Adrius, I finally got my secret Adrius off the vendor at the start of the day, and I used it game one. So, game one of round one, I used it, and I was like, yeah, this was worth buying. So, Adrius was good. Um, I used it quite a few times, actually, to get around things like the Shining that Tyrus wouldn't have dealt with. So I was glad I had it. I mean, even though the, the Shining allowed him to have cards back to his hand, it was still a way around the Shining. Uh, and then I played the one Arsenal Zen Mayo, which I never made. And then, tokens. That is the extra. It's exactly 15 cards, of course. For the side, um, this is exactly the same as it has always been. Double Veiler. These were great when they went in, but I never saw them against Insectors, so maybe I should side a third. Double Maxi. I didn't see these against Insectors, because I sided them in against Insectors because I didn't have the other Veiler to try and stop the Insector player going off with his Dragonfly plays, because he seemed to always have Dragonfly when I'd seen him in Swiss. He always had Dragonfly, so I sided these in, um, and I, again, never drew them. I never drew any of my sided cards for the Insector player, which really, really got to me. Dovetail Snow Man Eater. Um, these were really good um, because I found the Reapers were not that good this event, and I found myself preferring Snow Man Eaters. So I think like every round I sided in the Snow Man Eaters over the Reapers, and I probably switched the Reapers out of the main, or just completely cut the Reapers and put a Veiler and a Maxi in for these two. So don't know. Double Messenger. Um, I actually put these in against a Mermail player because I just didn't seem to have enough, enough ways to get around his Megalo, so I put this in just to stop him swinging with the Megalo at least, and it it worked because he had me he had me on on the ropes and he had a Megalo and I top deck this and I managed to get five free turns off of this, so that saved me. Uh, double Fissure uh, again. I didn't draw this against a Mermail player until late game, so that was crap. Uh, double Soul Taker. Hardly drew it. It was lackluster. MST and Dust. These were my outs to Gozen, Rivalry, and all that jazz. They put in the work on that respect, I guess. I only got Gozen once that I couldn't chain to, and I managed to play around it anyway, so it didn't matter. And the one Soul Drain, which I never drew against. The Mail Mail player, so that was dead too. Um, to summarise my rounds. Round 1 I played against Chaos. Chaos, it was a really weird deck with like card troopers, Kaiases, plague spreaders and things like that. It was just generic chaos deck. It's kinda of awkward to play against, but I ended up 2 0ing him. It was I, I of course couldn't really make any reads, but it was it's a fairly standard deck anyway, so I guess you can tell when things are gonna happen. Um Round two, I played against a friend of mine, Darren. He was playing Gear Gear and I knew his entire list basically because we've been discussing it just before the event. Um, so that was a that was a pain. We uh, ended up going to game three, where I shot clocked him. Sadly, I lost game two. I won game one. Um, I shot clocked him game three, and he still managed to play out of it with like a combination of goes and match and crazy stuff like that. But 
Um, I managed to win the game under goes and match, just keeping Shockmaster on board um, and beating down with a Shockmaster, Papal Imperative, and uh, Thunder King. So like Gigi Arms and things like that. It was all completely useless. His traps were his traps were dead. I was flipping up his defense position monsters. And I was killing them with Thunder King. So I just pushed for game from there. And it was it was a like a three or four turn game. <clears throat> round three was my. F I can't actually remember my round three now. I believe it was Heroes. Yes, round three was against Heroes. I hate playing Heroes or Heroes with this deck. I don't know why. Probably because Heroes are so controlling and they can make huge cards off of Miracle Fusion. And I hate Miracle Fusion as a card. Um, so round one, I believe I lost. I think I did lose. And then game two, um, the rivalries went in and I saw them because he dropped one when he was shuffling and I was like, oh, I don't want to lose to rivalry. So the MSTs and the Dust Tornadoes were in. Um, and I just had to hope really. And he didn't draw the, he, um, actually he did draw the, um, the rivalry game two. Um, he pot of duality for it and added it to his hand and then immediately set it because I followed it in his hand. So that I'd know where to MST where to MST later on, but he never actually activated. I made plays and he never activated the the rivalry. So I don't know what was going on there, and I managed to win by making some Xyz plays and killing him. And then game three, game three went into a complete grind. Oh yeah, by the way, I lost game one to like top decks. I had Utopia, Zen Mains, Leviathan, and I was one turn from killing him, and he drew and top deck Dark Hole. And then, like, next turn, he took me top deck to E call for Stratos and went Blade Armor, and that didn't kill me yet. And then he topped Miracle Fusion, and it was crazy, crazy plays. Um, game three was fairly standard. It was just, I, I got the factory, put it that way. I drew into the factory, and he lost. So that was that. Round four, I played against Insectors, and oh, God forbid. Re game one, I don't know what happened to me. Probably a combination of the three and a half hour bus journey to get there, or just the travel in general. Um, I misplayed off the wall. I missed about two or three factory searches. I missed two magician activations. And, oh, I missed so many things. Like, I missed bottom listing a centipede and things like that. And I had no idea what, how I missed it. But I missed it. We all make mistakes, I guess. And I was really tired and I topped up on water. And afterwards I was able to concentrate for my next rounds. Uh, game two, I managed to pull it back. Because he only drew Maxi as his only monster, so I guess that wasn't really a challenging game. He just drew Maxi, and I went off. Uh, regardless. Um, and then game three, it was an uphill struggle for him. Until he drew and set the Sangan. He had five in hand, I think, and set Sangan. Um, and then uh, he of course, I, of course, I of course attacked the Sangan, because I didn't know it was Sangan. He searched the Hornet to hand, and then immediately dropped the Dragonfly and went crazy. And... It took him a couple of turns to kill me with like dragonfly looping, but oh, it was crazy and I lost. So that was my first loss. My second loss was to Mermails the next round, and I really didn't feel happy with the second loss. Like my first loss I deserved because of the misplay in game one. Round uh, round five against Mermails, um, he opened Undyne Sphere to my Magician Rat. I opened Magician Rat and like spells in my opening hand game one. And then game, uh, and then he he went Undyne Sphere because he was going first and searched the Moolin to hand, and he was just set for the game. I was like, wow, could you open any worse? By the way, the whole game he was complaining about how his luck was shit and how his hands were terrible. After he dropped Undyne Sphere, and I was just sitting there thinking, what are you on about? You're you're being a bit of a knob here because I'm sitting here with nothing, and you're completely smashing my face. Uh, game two, I sided in I think nine cards or something like that from my extra, from my side, like I sided in Taker MST. So, um, Drain, MSTs, two Takers, two Fissures, two Messenger, two Snowman, and I didn't find any of it. I didn't find any of this, and the whole time, he, I went into my OTK turn one. He, he set a monster, set a, he set a monster, set a back row, passed. And I went, okay, Magician Shark. And I made my play, and he didn't have Maxi, and he had nothing to stop me, and I went, Dweller, monster, 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 monster. And he went, I went attack, and he went uh, mirror force. And that was that was it, I just lost from there. And the whole game, it took him about 20 turns to game me from my top decks. He had five to my one every turn. And it took him 10 of his own turns to beat me because he couldn't get past those top decked cards. And the whole time he was pissing and moaning about how awful his luck was. And it was really upsetting and I really wish I could have put him in his place.
And I don't care if you're watching this, because you were a douche. You were a complete douche. So, I... I don't understand. So, I got absolutely wrecked by luck that time. I don't, I don't care if people don't like the term luck. It was luck that time. That time. And that put me out of the standings, really. I played round six thinking I could rescue my, um, rescue my score. Um, so I played round six against, um, that Cyber Eltonin machine deck that turned up at a YCS in a feature match once. And, um, round one he managed to gallus me to 300 life points and then I managed to just pull it back with Magician Shark that I'd been holding in hand all the time until it eventually registered to me that he did not have hand traps from, like, rat using rats to try and bait the hand traps. So he didn't have hand traps and I just went for it and completely blew his field away. And he had like BLS, Gala, he had like BLS, Zen main stuff. And I managed to just completely blow away his field and swing for game. And then game two, it was a very similar story. He wasn't really happy with me. I don't, a lot of people really weren't happy to see me playing windups, but at the end of the day, there were some really jammy decks. The Mermail player that I played against was like, oh, I hate windups. They're so, you know, so bandwagon. He's so, such a, you know, everyone plays it. And I was just sitting there going, you're playing Mermail. You're playing the new hyped deck. That's like saying, oh, I hate Insectors, but you're playing Rabbit, so... I don't know. Either way, it, went, it was 4-2, and I dropped the final round. It was seven rounds, I dropped the final round, and I did feature match coverage. So I will have feature matches up, hopefully Tuesday. I'm, I don't know when this is going to be uploaded, but I will hopefully have the feature matches up on Tuesday. I got table one for the 2XO players uh, at the final round, in round seven. Um, I got... Um, a feature match of the said Mermail player that beat me against an Insector player that beat me. Both the players that beat me top eighted um, against the Insector player that beat me. And then I got um, Tom Watabiki with his windups against an agent player, the agent player who was on table one and on XO. <laughs> and then in the finals, I won't tell you the finals because, well, that'll be spoiling. Um, Ultimately, I hope you enjoy the coverage that I've got coming up. I also did a, a, a vlog on how far it, on how far this journey was and how long it was and the lengths I go to to come to Yu-Gi-Oh. So if you guys want to see that vlog, I know if you want me to, if you want me to finish it, I'll finish it if you uh, comment and like this video. Otherwise, yeah, that's about all I have to talk about. I'll see you guys soon. This has been Jamie the Kid Zero Zero with a regionals report. I'll see you guys with some content later on in the week. Bye.